Good afternoon, everyone. We're going to allow a few minutes to um, people start to connecting and uh, logging in in the meeting. So we will give a little bit more, a few minutes, so people can get settled in, and we're going to start shortly. All right, I see a lot of people already joined in. Uh, we wanna get started so we can have a lot of time for discussion and questions. I wanna first introduce our team. Uh, we have here a few uh, city staff. My name is Ana Claudia. I'm, I am your parks planner assigned to this area. We have uh, Kristen, our project manager for, our, um, for the construction and then for the whole project. She's pretty awesome. You guys are gonna be very happy with her. We have Craig, our fierce leader here, uh, leading and assisting us, and then he's a huge support for this project and our consulting team. And let's um, introduce our consulting team. You, those uh, faces are familiar to you. Uh, Stream also was the consultant, uh, done many works in, in Wash Park. And his, uh, this team is very um, knowledgeable about our uh, Wash Park uh, existing conditions and everything wash park, they're very ex experts on it. So we are very happy to have them as our team and they provide a lot of support in this project as well. So here's some uh, housekeeping items. I, this is our meeting agenda and we're gonna be going in into providing this content for you and allowing a lot of time for us to ask questions. We do ask that you they remain muted so we can continue presenting the information and uh, giving that download of information for you. We will allow time for questions. So be patient, we'll announce the time that we'll be um, welcoming uh, uh, questions through the chat. And then we're also gonna be uh, answering all those questions that you have. If we do not, for some reason, um, have enough time to address all your questions, please don't feel um, uh, don't feel don't feel bad about it. I am your contact person. My email is going to be provided in the beginning and uh, at the end as well. You can always contact me with your questions, and I'm here to support you and provide all the information needed. So if we don't get, uh, if we don't have the time to address all the questions, depending how many questions we have, uh, feel free uh, to contact me directly and I'm here to support you. I just wanna remind everyone um, the project area, if you're not familiar with, um, with the project area, we are here by um, north of the Smith Lake by the Boat House and the Rec Center. And uh, for those that uh, remember, this is a project uh, activating uh, the now there's an uh, empty area, but before there was uh, the North Playground, as many of you, the community remembers and refers the, the playground as the North uh, Playground. So we are focusing, we are studying a little bit of the lake edge, but we are focusing the implementation of this project uh, at the priority area dashed here in, in orange, but we are looking at the interactions of the lake as well. I just wanna give a little reminder of one, the intent and the background of this project. We want to provide uh, new amenities and new improvements to this project area has been empty for a long time. And I know the community has been eager to see what we are able to do here. So we're excited to 
uh, engage you all to understand what are the possibilities here. Um, I also want to remind you guys that we are uh, following our master plan recommendations here as well. Uh, that work, that amazing community engagement that was created for the master plan does not go lost here. We are looking at the recommendations and we are looking also what are the other needs and the, all the things that the community would like to see here. But the master plan recommendations are a, a, a huge foundation for the design work as well that we are about to introduce to yourself. I also want to give you some uh, insights about what are a timeline for this project. So we kicked off a survey in February and to kind of really uh, advance our community engagement with you guys to really understand what are the needs and desires for this area and, and um, in, in reflection of what the master plan recommendation as well. We are here today with our first public meeting. Um, we're gonna be presenting some ideas uh, that we uh, were able to produce uh, in, in uh, reflection of the survey that we launched on February and also based on the master plan recommendations. We'll have another public meeting to be announced very soon with a uh, evolution of the design and then we'll continue to engage the community as well. We're also gonna launch a second survey um, very shortly after this meeting, we'll, we'll provide the link to our uh, community partners, our RNOs. We're gonna be posting on social media. Those that provided emails to us are gonna receive the link via email as well. Basically, the second survey will be another way for you to provide your feedback and comments on the design concepts we're presenting today. And for those that could not attend the meeting today, also will have an opportunity to uh, gain access to the information that we, we are providing today and also provide their feedback. We welcome all the feedback that we can get. So please share that survey link to your contacts, to your social media, really, really make uh, accessible to anyone in the community and your networks because we welcome all feedback and it will help us to really um, evolve the design to something that the community really wants to see in this space. Uh, we are also going to uh, be very busy working on construction documents uh, very shortly after we um, uh, finalize our design and our intent to, to, to start construction in uh, late of ne next year. So a little bit more about our site, just giving you a little bit of a reminder of how beautiful it is. Um, again, this is our priority area of the project, uh, but we are looking also the surroundings uh, to really uh, integrate these new amenities with the existing amenities uh, within uh, the project area and the priority area. <clears throat> Just a reminder everyone, if you haven't been here in a while, that we have amazing views. Uh, we have the uh, integration the integration opportunity with the boat house. We have blessed with so many beautiful trees. They are uh, mature and provides a lot of shade and, and it just makes the walks over there very pleasant. Uh, we have our beloved city ditch, which it is a uh, so suiting and, and an amazing amenity as well. I know a uh, lots of you enjoy the trails and and walking as um, uh, walk along the, the ditch is is a is such a quite um, uh, great experience and is is really close to the site, so you get to enjoy that amenity as well. We also have our lake shore views, which is going to be very close to the site. And um, we're also going to be studying um, connections to that. Uh, but I want to remind everyone that our prairie area is contained uh, mainly uh, on the previous location of the North Playground. So it's basically the empty pits is our priority area for the project. Uh, next, I wanted to go over our survey results. Uh, we, have, we had an incredible feedback from the community. So thank you so much for those that really spent the time to uh, give us um, your first impressions and answer that survey it was very helpful for us to understand how you guys wanna see this area evolve. 
And also it was very helpful for our design team to really get uh, the design process going so we can get this meeting here with some great ideas for you guys to uh, provide feedback from. <clears throat> we were very excited with the answers and um, we had a lot of feedback and I, I'm not gonna read uh, each one of those because I hope you, if it's legible for you guys, if it's not, let me know. Uh, but just real quick, uh, a lot of key takeaways from this survey uh, is that um, uh, inter inter interaction with water was very important for the community. So we are exploring that idea a lot within the concept, concept designs. Um, we have a lot of people that really favored um, a uh, inclusive play uh, uh, activities for uh, kids in all uh, ages and um, all abilities. And a lot of kids also, a, a lot of people also voice their needs to cater to a certain group of, uh, of kids to mostly younger kids. Let me take here my notes. Uh, we also presented a group of photos for you guys. And some of the key takeaways was that on our playful uh, ideas bucket, uh, that was the highest uh, ranked uh, the most favored one with the, all those photos. Um, and um, the playful especially uh, that was geared to a younger, I mean, is that were geared to more uh, younger kids were also very favored and an inclusivity as well. Many favored flexible use of space, a lot of gathering area, plaza, and uh, um, a lot of opportunities for searing areas. That was something that we also heard a lot on this on the survey. Um, a lot of us, a lot of the community told us that they do not want a, a active recreational such as sports courts, uh, tennis courts, or basketballs. They feel like that amenity is well covered elsewhere in the park, and that we have an opportunity here to to implement something really unique to to the uh, to, to complement what we already exist in the park. Um, a lot, we also allow a lot of opportunity for you guys just to, you know, go, go outside the box of the question and really tells us what you're thinking. And uh, a lot of the writing suggestions like really surprise us. A lot of people are asking for is liking uh, food and coffee availability. Um, and a lot of people were referencing the looks and feel of European Plaza, which was super interesting to me. So I'm really excited to explore those ideas. A lot of people really liked the um, uh, the key amenities of the site. Really the lake views, the boat house, and the mature trees were 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 the most likely features of the site as well. So we are super excited about this feedback, and was incredible helpful for us to understand um, this information and how we how we trying to implement that to our design concepts and continue to engage you guys to get more feedback on the uh, evolution for the evolution of the design that will be critical as well. Now I wanna turn into our design team. They're gonna present the design concepts developed based on the feedback that we received so far and also based on the master plan recommendations. Jesse. Thanks. Can everyone hear me okay? Thumbs up. Yes. Excellent. Well, it's, it's nice to see all of you again. Uh, there's a lot of familiar faces in the audience here. I wish we were actually uh, somewhere together where we could hover over some boards and drawings together and, and have good communication. We're, we're um, going to do our best to communicate some of the ideas that we've come up with here um, via our new normal. Um, and I just wanted to reiterate a couple of things that as we go through this, you know, we're really, we're really grateful that there was so much response from the community um, on this area because it's, it's a relatively small area, but important area uh, within the park. And so we're, we're really trying to focus on the community desires that we received from different comments, the survey, et cetera. Um, second point I wanted to make is that we're really in a position here to try to make 
um, a flexible space. I think a lot of the feedback that we got was that people want the spaces at the park and in particular this area to, to do a lot of work. And there's um, a, a lot that can be done in a small area. And we are adapting to this area rather than, um, you know, we're not necessarily looking at this as a clean slate. So with a relatively restricted, or, or I shouldn't say restricted, with a relatively limited budget for reclaiming this area and, and restoring this area to some um, complementary use and co complementary space. So just wanted to point out a couple of those things. Um, Anna Claudia already pointed out that we're really um, trying to fulfill the recommendations of the master plan with all of these ideas. And with that, we can move to the next slide. I just wanted to quickly, um, hopefully people are, I know this community, you guys are all out there uh, very frequently. People are walking and you're well aware of what's going on, but I do like to sort of set the stage with the, the sort of existing conditions that are out there. And so if you can see the green at the top, we're gonna to be always looking at these drawings with north at the top of the drawing. So that green blob there, that's the lake. Yep, thank you. And you can see some of the, um, the paddle boats there off to the side, that's the little dock. The boathouse is on the right edge of this screen. Yep, thank you very much. And then interesting um, forms, the concrete paths that surround the existing playground or the, the old playground, I should say. Um, a lot of people refer to them as the play pits. Those pits have some interesting forms and we're actually looking at preserving some of that because we think there are some interesting things about the heritage of why it's there, but it also helps us in terms of, of spending our money where it counts. And so in other words, if we don't have to replace a lot of the infrastructure that's still in good shape, we can spend those dollars or spend that budget on providing some valuable um, amenities, activity areas, those kinds of things. So on the north edge there next to the lake is, is a relatively large, crush, what we call crusher finds area. Um, some people call it gravel. That area does, um, it it's, gets quite a bit of drainage to it. And so you might, when you're out there, see that it degrades relatively quickly. And it gives the operations folks plenty to, plenty to work on when they're trying to fix it and keep things from um, just running off into the lake. Then going into the middle ground, there's, yep, thank you. Uh, there's the larger open pit area. And then to the south is the smaller open pit area. All of these currently are full of what we would call an engineered wood fiber or wood chips. Um, and so that's sort of the character of what we're working with. Um, there's relatively reasonable irrigation around this area. There's, um, as Anna Claudia mentioned earlier, there's a lot of really nice, healthy, mature trees out here. So we're also really cognizant of preserving the character of things that are there and complementing those adjacent uses, like the edge of the shore, the edge of the lake, the boathouse, um, and uh, the ditch, et cetera. There's a picnic area to the south of the site. So we're really cognizant of how this area can start to really stitch together some of these, uh, some of these activities. And you can just see on the right the condition of what's out there right now. Obviously, it was just, just after it snowed when we took the most recent pictures. Um, the good news is a lot of the concrete infrastructure out there is in actually very good shape for the most part. Um, so this just kind of gives you an idea of the bones that we're working with. And let's, without further ado, let's go ahead and start with the first concept. We're going to talk to you about two different concepts. I want to remind everyone that um, if you like one or the other more, that's great. There are aspects of each concept that are interchangeable. So if you, for instance, say, well, I really like this about concept E and I like this about concept B, um, we'd love to hear those kinds of concepts, uh, uh, sorry, those kinds of uh, comments. Um, in concept A, the idea here is that you would have um, some sort of small plaza area on the north edge, where you can see the, the note says a focal point, maybe it's a sculptural feature with accent paving. And so the idea here is it's 
a relatively quaint and formalized plaza space that is flanked by a small turf area. Again, there's lots of turf around the edge. Yep. And then there'd be a small picnic area on the other side. Thank you. Whoever's driving is doing a great job. I'm not driving. This is just it's doing whatever I want it to do. Um, and then you see these uh, polygons between the picnic area and that focal point. Those would be some sort of garden space that complements the, the surrounding areas. Maybe it refers over to the perennial garden areas. And then you've got a small um, deck that we call the performance deck. It could be a platform of some sort, elevated, or uh, maybe it's a low platform. Um, and you could imagine maybe seeing a small performance there, or maybe it's just a place to lay out and catch some rays uh, when it's calm. And then the furthest south area, that polygon exactly, um, we're imagining some sort of what I would call a less formal play area. It's more of a playable area. You can see the images on the bottom right where these could be uh, mounds of artificial turf where kids can go and roll around. They can have fun. You could still lay a blanket out in this space if you wanted to um, and make a picnic. And then in the middle, you know, we've heard some, we've heard some comments from a lot of families and parents that they would like this to be an area where maybe smaller children could have something to do. So this area is very age flexible and we could maybe have a, what we would um, imagine to be a smooth concrete mound where kids could slide and climb on it, but it doesn't take a whole lot of technical ability. And then after each of these plans, we're gonna show you a couple of rendered images uh, that just illustrate what these spaces could look like. So the next image would, this is looking at that focal point, kind of standing at the lakeshore edge, looking towards the south. And so this is that focal point again, where I'm, where I described a small little plaza space. Um, you might have some pavers or some kind of different paving. The concrete walk that you see in the foreground is existing walk. And then this little area might have a sculpture or something to that effect, some seating areas, some planting areas that just help separate the area. We can capitalize on all the existing natural shade that's in, the, in there. Off to the right, again, it's just a small turf area that helps link some of the other turf areas. In the background, you see those tables. And in the very background, you see those mounds. Next image is just a different perspective. This just shows you what that artificial turf mound area could look like. It's scaled, again, for smaller children, probably, but everyone can enjoy it. And then you can kind of see in the background that little performance platform area. And then the turf all around is all existing, and there's some mature trees that are all existing. You can see that this is a relatively passive concept, but it provides for some activities. Um, it's also something that could be flexible. You see the edge near the shoreline, we would propose potentially converting it into a turf area. This area could work with events at the boathouse, um, and it's a little more stable for uh, all those erosion issues that I described earlier. And just if we didn't mention, we're gonna go through these concepts really quickly. And then I think we'll open it up at the end. We'll open it up to um, comments uh, both in the chat and we'll allow people to, uh, to speak. I believe that's the, the plan. Uh, one more view here, just looking uh, towards the shoreline through that little plaza area. So again, you're sort of looking north, northwest here. This gives you an idea of what these little planter areas could be any number of things uh, that we could plant in there. They could be more related to the perennial gardens, as I mentioned, or maybe they're just a buffer, uh, a buffer planting. Next concept. Okay, this is concept B. Um, some of the comments that we got were, were really great with regards to having some creative seating options or flexible seating options. So you see that lower right image, but we call it stadium seating. It's just really, or terraces that somebody could hang out on it, uh, uh, on a normal day, or maybe it could again function for other um, for other types of events. But then in this concept, we've taken 
and integrated some of the um, ideas that people expressed um, with regards to water play. And so on the uh, left-hand lower side, you'll see there's a small plaza area. This is not a large water feature, but there's a small plaza area that has more of a trickle or bubbler type water feature where the children can play, everyone can play, it's cool. It takes advantage of, again, that mature shade. You'll see just above that and adjacent to it is another take on that performance deck or that platform. Again, can function for a really nice place to hang out and look out towards the lake. That deck overlooks a larger turf area. So uh, in the former concept, you see that turf area was maybe half this size. This concept has a slightly larger turf area. That could function again for some sort of performance space. You could even hold a small um, little, you know, maybe a trio or somebody's playing guitar or something like that. Um, and then towards the lower corner, we've got swings. Now, some of you may or may not know there's um, quite a bit of history related to swings at Washington Park. And swings have been in this area for quite some time, um, far before the structure was there that, that um, used to occupy this space. And so what we've done is we've placed a couple of, uh, of uh, multi-age swings. So we call it a basket swing. It's sort of like the one at the diagonal where there's a large dish. You can see that image to the right there. We've got a basket swing and maybe we even integrate some what we call a belt swing, which is the more traditional swing that people are familiar with. And then you'll see in these, in the north up towards the shoreline, you'll notice, remember Anna Claudia um, identified the priority area and if budget and everything accommodates, potentially we can start looking at improvements towards the shoreline. This is a little different take. Concept A converts a large area of this to turf. In both concepts, we would like to see a little bit better restoration of the shoreline itself. So you would see a more naturalized restoration. And then you see a small area where some tables would be a nice place to take in a picnic, look at the lake, and there's a small turf area that accommodates that existing tree. That's a very, a very nice existing tree in that area. So what does this one look like? Let's move on to the first image. Oh, I forgot to say, I was supposed to get ribbed here. I, was, I forgot to say, we got a lot of very positive comments and requests um, for some type of interactive water feature. We do wanna add that there are some technicalities for getting water to this area that potentially are gonna cost money beyond what we have for, for the project. But um, so just wanted to identify that this is a budget dependent feature and potentially could be a future phase. So this, um, this concept could be designed to accommodate that as a future, um, a future improvement when money were, were available or if fundraising, uh, those kinds of things um, were brought into the picture. Okay, now let's take a look at what it looks like. So this is the west corner, looking towards that facility. You can see the swings potentially off to the right. You see the small performance deck and a nice little water feature. Again, maybe these are bubbling rocks where children could pool up water within these little basins. It can spill out and then it runs down a little rill through the plaza. Maybe we could even interject some little pop um, pop jets or smaller fountains that aren't, this is not a large, what we would call a splash pad. This is more of a passive splash area or, or water, interactive water area. You see the deck in the background with seating that wraps around. So imagine sort of a low terrace edge that wraps all the way around. And then that deck or that platform could function for performance, or it could be again, just a place where you spread out and you're out of uh, and you're out of the grass. Um, maybe you have a towel or a picnic up there. And you see in the background that larger turf area. By the way, those two benches in the foreground are existing. They're there right now. Again, almost all of the walk that you see in that white gray color is there. 
So this is an adaptation to that plan. Next image. This just gives you an idea from above the scale of space. Again, this is not a, it's not a huge space that we're dealing with, but I think if we, if we plan it and design it appropriately, it can be a really flexible space. So this just gives you another perspective from above uh, what that would look like. And we can revisit these images if you'd like. We'll give you a minute just to kind of look into it. You can see again how the, the uh, bench seating would wrap around that platform. And then we've got um, some new trees that we would integrate to help shade that space. And then you see the turf in the, in the uh, foreground there. Those benches in the background are the existing benches that I mentioned earlier. And then the next image. This is looking across that space towards the south. You can see the lake uh, in the background. All right. So let's see, Anna Claudia, are you going to um, speak through this or are we going to take questions now? Or anyone, Anna Claudia, Christian. Um, I am going to uh, remind everyone about next steps, and we're gonna open up to questions. And uh, we are receiving a lot of great questions on the on the chat. Uh, Kristen, uh, amazing PM is gonna moderate those questions to uh, to us. Um, so I want to re remind everyone that we will have a second public meeting where we'll take this feedback that we received today together with the second survey that we're going to be launching soon to the community. Uh, uh, with that feedback uh, for this concept design, we'll, we will evolve the design based on that and we'll present it again for an, a, a third round of, of uh, uh, engagement. So you can, you have plenty of opportunity to give us uh, your, your opinions. Do you like what you don't like? Uh, we are not asking you to rank a concept A versus concept B because we really want to understand what you really love about this space, right? You, you want, we want you to imagine yourself in that space sitting on the areas, looking at the lake edge, bringing your little ones, your kids to, um, to, 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 the, to the area, let them run free. I have a two and a half year old. I can't wait to see him run around the area. So see, imagine yourself in this space, um, in concept A, in concept B, and tell us what you like about it, what you don't like about it, what we're missing. Was there anything else that, you see that could improve this design. Um, and that's the kind of engagement that we're hoping. Uh, yes, feel free to tell us if you like A or B better, but really we're really hoping for, for us to understand how you, how you see yourself in this space, what you like and what you don't like. This is incredible helpful to us and is, is amazing feedback that really helped us to evolve the design. Um, so this is the timeline for the project, and um, my contact information is going to be available to you, uh, to uh, so you can contact me with, with any questions, and I am your point of contact to next steps, to be looped in, to get information about the project, and all these great things. I see a lot of comments and a lot of questions. This is so exciting. Thank you, guys. Uh, I'm going to turn to Kristen so we can moderate the questions and comments and, um, and, and start our engagement uh, process. Yeah, um, thank you everyone um, for submitting all of your comments and questions. Um, I just want to let you know that there is a little bit of a delay and some technical difficulties that the DPR team is trying to address with the chat box. Um, so. Um, I am not able to read all of them yet, but we wanted to open it up to um, the group and um, see if you guys are able to um, share some of your comments and questions. If you wanna raise your hand, um, there's a raise your hand option at, on your bottom toolbar. Um, 
I believe, Jesus, is that correct? Um, everyone can see it at the bottom of their toolbar. Um, if you would like to um, raise your hand, if you wanna share some thoughts, ideas, comments, questions. Um, and once we do have some people interested, we'll, um, Jesus um, and the DPR team will be able to provide you guys access um, for, to verbalize your questions. Um, some of the questions that I am able to read um, are the project cost. So the project cost um, with the entire project cost for design and all of construction is $390,000 for this area. Um, and we are working with our consultant just making sure that both concepts that have been shared to, as of today um, will hopefully be able to be within that limit. Um, obviously, it, um, we will have to work through the different materials and um, how it is constructed. Um, but that is our main goal is to show you guys what we are able to provide to the community with the allocated budget that we have. Um, in both concepts, will the new plants and grasses be connected to a sprinkler system? Um, yes. So any plantings that we have um, coming into the park will be irrigated um, with our current irrigation system. We have anyone raising their hands ready to share any comments yet? Just checking in with the team. It uh, looks like uh, Lyanne Manson is ready to provide some comments. Hang on, Lynn. We, we can't hear you just yet, Lynn. I think we're working on unmuting you. Okay. There you I go. Just, yeah, I was just going to say, I really like the concept A that had the small tables and more seating. And it seems like a lot of people that have small children like the playground idea. So maybe we don't need the stage areas on either of them and convert that area to more playground-ish and have the, keep those two little, I don't know those, there's something about those two person tables that are very engaging. And I don't know that we need a small performance area if we need more playground, that's my comment, my idea. Thank you, Lynn. Yeah, thank you. Um, and, and that question um, does bring up another question that came in in our chat. Um, Beth um, had a question about why does neither option include true playground elements? Um, and um, to basically answer that question is we wanted to make sure that we were providing um, different uh, program elements in this location coming from what we received from the survey results and also how it aligns with the 2011 master plan. Um, this, this old playground um, that was formerly here, um, the idea in the plan was to basically create a new um, kind of central um, playground hub in Wash Park, which is now located at the, at the diagonal a little bit further south. Um, so, that has been a really successful project um, that was implemented a couple of years ago. Um, and so now we are looking at this location near the boathouse, um, trying to serve, um, going back to the master plan and understand how it fits within um, the master plan and also the community feedback that we, re that we have received. So Kristen? Yes. Hi, good Good evening, everyone. Um, Kate, I see that you raised your hand. I'm gonna direct this question to Ana Claudia that we received earlier, and then we will open it up to Kate. Um, so the question is, are the survey results available somewhere? And then how many responses are included in, in this survey? Yeah, the, the question, uh, the survey results is not available yet, but we'll be working making that available to the public. 
we did open up the survey to a lot of writing questions. So right now I have 133 pages of responses. Uh, to provide that to the public is not really practical. So we need to go over um, and, and make it um, uh, visually readable to the, to the public. I believe we received, uh, I wanted to check back the exact number, but uh, roughly 700 responses to the initial survey. So we were, um, uh, we received a lot of feedback and then were really good commentary and uh, a lot of feedback on, on what we, the questions that we engaged. Uh, we're gonna be updating our DPR website with some uh, materials at uh, this presentation uh, and uh, how we uh, most practically can share the, the survey feedback with you guys. Uh, a lot of the writing questions um, uh, we'll need to um, do some, to provide some quantitative analysis of it, uh, group them in themes and provide that feedback to you guys as a way for you to understand the feedback that we received. Um, a lot of the, our, the survey uh, to you guys is, was just one piece. We also surveyed our maintenance team to understand what is the best um, uh, in the future when we build the space, what is the best maintenance uh, operations approach for this space as well. So a lot of analysis goes into it and you guys provide a huge piece of it. We'll make the survey available, not the answer by answer, but our um, a shareable analysis will be available in the website shortly. Um, Kate, uh, I believe you, uh, you are unmuted if, if you want to comment or ask a question. Kate Schmitz. Kate, are you able to uh, to unmute yourself? Uh, sorry, Kate, if, if you're unable to, we'll move on to Eliza. Um, if Kate, you'd like to put your question in the chat so we make sure. So she's unmuted. Mm -hmm. She's unmuted, I'm not sure. Maybe she's trying to get somewhere so she can speak. Okay. Uh, I'll I'll move to Eliza, uh, and then we'll go back to some of the questions that are in the chat because there there's been a lot of questions that come up. Eliza, you should be able to unmute yourself. Sure. Can you hear me? Yeah. We can. Yes. Great. Uh, well, well, thank you. This is interesting. Um, yeah, I think uh, I'm curious. I have a couple of questions and comments. I guess I'll start with the comments. Um, yeah, I think as some have said in the chat you know, and especially over this year of COVID where we're all, you know, kind of considerate of how close we are to people. The South Playground is quite uh, busy, quite crowded. We, you know, we live only a couple blocks off the park. We actually haven't gone that much this year just um, due to that, which is sort of unfortunate. And that would be helped by having some additional, you know, sort of specific kid equipment elsewhere in the park. Um, you know, I really like, yeah, that idea or the design of having some water feature or mounds or other things that aren't necessarily specific, specifically playground, but that can be really easily accessible to a wide range of, of ages and kids. Um, and I guess one question I have is, you know, and maybe this is just strange or outside the box, but I'm kind of curious, um, is there any room to try to yeah, raise money or do some kind of fundraising for that effort if there's a specific uh if there can be sort of a uh, specific goal in mind because i would imagine that it would be easier to you know raise money on the front end and then do the whole project than do a project and then have to redo some of it later if there's you know something that needs to be added Yeah, thank you so much, um, and um, thank you for for that idea. It, it's 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 one of those conversations we can definitely have, um, and we appreciate um, you know that acknowledgement. Obviously, with, with this um, project that we have and the allocated budget, um, 
there's only so much that we can do in this location. Um, so we, we are trying to do um, the best we can um, with um, you know the information that we received from the community and uh, the DPR internal team with also aligning with the 2011 master plan. Um, and I definitely hear you, the, the South Playground is very popular. Um, great design stream, way to go. Um, and um, we definitely see, you know, the need and the request and um, the feedback that we got from the community, community with providing some different, different playable items um, throughout the park and especially in this location. So um, we can definitely take that into consideration in the, in the next sta stages of design. Um, I think that is definitely beneficial for the next phase. I'm gonna try to unmute Kate again. Hopefully we're able to, to get her in the comment and then I know there's a lot of questions coming in. So we'll try to answer as many of those as we can tonight. Okay, how about now? We can hear you. Perfect. Okay, well, I, uh, it, the last person who was speaking picked up quite a few of the things I was going to say. I think that um, as a parent, also a couple uh, blocks off the park, um, not having a playground here would be a pretty, would be a bummer. Um, it's um, uh, you know, the ability to have that playground, which we live on that side of the park, so it's obviously convenient for us, but um, I think that's going to be an important piece of the mix here for sure. And I think the other thing that she brought up that I was also going to bring up is this concept of fundraising. Um, I think that Wash Park is in an area that you will find a lot of interested and engaged parents that would be um, willing and able to, um, you know, look at doing some sort of fundraising activity. So I'd be very interested to hear um, how the city would handle that if we were to put together some sort of a fundraiser to raise funds for this area. Uh, I can answer that question about the fundraising. We definitely will work with the community on the opportunity. We do have a, a staff member that's not current in this meeting, but we can uh, work with her and uh, the community to uh, really uh, put the goal of a fundraising for this project. And we definitely can uh, explore that opportunity. We welcome any help. Um, you know, we appreciate the commitment and the support that the community and the parents, you know, would love to explore that idea if the community would like to talk to us about it, contact me, and then I can start a discussion of, of, the, um, of the logistics of putting our, our um, fundraising um, funds for this project. Chris, Another question, Jesus? Um, so, let's see. We, we have some questions about the survey. If the survey specifically asked if there was gonna be an additional playground, um, if the community wanted a, an additional playground. So I want to remind everyone that we did not start from scratch. We do have a park master plan that had a robust in committee engagement to inform those recommendations. And then we really start from there. The master plan does not call to a traditional playground here. And then we saw this a, as an opportunity for us to really ask the community what they want to hear, right? Like, I know there are a lot of you favor a traditional playground, but we also received overwhelming feedback that we wanted to, that the community wants to create a flexible space here. So we are listening to your feedback and this is in reflection to the uh, community engagement that was done for the master plan. Uh, this is a, a regional park. So the community engagement for the master plan was massive. Uh, and well documented, and then we have those recommendations. Uh, this is an opportunity for us to understand what is the additional needs. We can definitely incorporate 
um, play elements that really can fulfill that need. There is also all the needs like they can meet also voice, gathering space, sitting areas, leisure, and interaction with the other amenities with the park. So we are listening to that as well. So um, I hope you are open-minded to the to our design process because we did not start from scratch. We really, really anchor our foundation from the master plan and the survey uh, responses that we got. Um, we have a question from uh, Timothy. He was asking uh, if, the, if the potential water feature, if that is possible at this time. Um, so Timothy, I may unmute you just because I'm not sure if you're talking if, if it could be budgeted or if because of COVID, if that's a feature that, that mm -hmm. will be allowed. Hi, Timothy, that's a great question. Um, right now, as, as where we have it standing, um, it, we are planning to um, be able to provide a, a water feature or, or small water trickle um, concept um, for this area um, if this is what the, the community is gonna be asking for. Um, obviously, it's, it's not gonna be, um, you know, a, a large splash pad, um, you know, a, a huge um, amusement area. Um, it's going to be that smaller trickle, um, very, um, very subtle um, kind of water feature as what um, our design consultant did show. So what, what we have shown as of today in both concept A and concept B is what this um, project budget, what we can afford for um, at this time. Um, that, I'll just add to, hey, Tim, how you doing? Good to see you. Um, yeah. the, some of the complexities associated with that are frankly, the, the CDPHE has certain requirements for water features that are interactive. And so um, we're starting to investigate what infrastructure we actually can access in order to make that happen with regards to water lines, and sanitary lines, and all of these kinds of things. And so we're um, initially pretty optimistic that the scale of feature that we're showing is doable. There's, there happens to be um, infrastructure that we think can, can fulfill um, that feature everywhere around, given water supply at the rec center and at the boathouse, but we're, we're just getting into that but we're pretty optimistic that we can make something like that happen. That, that was my main concern, cost and logistics of getting water to that site yep. from another source. I'm also interested to see whether this is gonna be drinkable water because if I understand there's gonna be little fountains springing up there, I think little kids are gonna be tempted to drink this water. It, it would have to be potable water, yeah. yeah. That, that is one of that is one of those restrictions um, that would get uh, that would be directed by CDPHE guidelines. Thank yep. you. Yep, you're right on with that. So, just going back to an earlier question and staying on the water feature on option A, there was a photo of the Winkin, Blinken, and Nod statue uh, in a water feature. Can you explain how and where this could be included in the plan? Um. I'll, I'll take that since, um, so the picture that you're looking at, can you zoom in on that, Carrie? Or whoever, I think Carrie's driving. So the picture of Wink and Blink and Nod that you're looking at is a historic image. Um, the old fountain used to actually be integrated into the city ditch just south of this, of this playground area. And there are still remnants of the infrastructure there. there um, but what essentially that was, was a very shallow basin. You can see some, what looked like sprinkler heads popping out of that shallow basin. Uh, Wink and Blink and Nod used to actually take water from City Ditch and circulate it through this shallow basin. That's how that facility functioned. Um, you know, some time ago, there were, there were a lot of things that went wrong with, with that situation. And 
um, rules change, the ditch water changed, the ownership of the ditch changed, just lots of things changed. And so that's the, the very short version of why the wink and wink and nod feature was moved. Um, so, you know, we're showing this image because uh, it was, it was something to be considered. And I think it was something that showed up on the survey as well. I think a lot of people expressed on the survey that, that they liked where the wink and blink and nod uh, feature is right now. But, you know, we thought it deserved the attention to be shown how um, water and sculpture were both part of the heritage of this area. So hope, hopefully that answers the question. If that doesn't, somebody can go ahead and add. Well, I would like to uh, add as well that we have not fully uh, studied the possibility of moving the Wicked Blinken uh, statue. Uh, the master plan does does recommend um, this this statue to be relocated to a little bit south of this area, but we do get we did get a lot of feedback about that and how some uh, community members do favor a lot of uh, the relocation of Wink and Blinken here. We had to determine if the statue can be moved. You know, we need to understand what is the impacts of this structure and uh, the functionality of, of the uh, water future with that. We wanted to understand, you know, any, any implications with, um, uh, we, we definitely don't want to damage, right? We would definitely want to be careful relocating. And if it is feasible to relocate and budget allows, we can definitely entertain that idea and study further. Uh, but yet we have, do not have an answer if the stash can be moved and we're going to be uh, looking at that as well in this process. I would like to go ahead and address some of the questions that I'm not sure that we've adequately addressed yet. I'm Craig with uh, Parks. And I was, um, for those of you that were involved in the master plan 10 years ago, um, it's nice to see you again. I, I was uh, the project manager on that years ago. So intimately involved with this community, but it's been a while. Um, a couple of questions, primarily the, the need for play we hear you. I, what, what we would like to hear a little bit more is, you know, what type of play. You know, I, I think we've heard that um, there's not enough sort of inclusive uh, types of play in in the new playground, um, and perhaps we could introduce some more of that here. But is it, you know, is it more swings or slides, or is it a more uh, traditional type of play feature that was uh, similar to what was there before? You know, that's a question that I'd throw back to the to the community because uh, with even within these concepts, we can add some more play features. Uh, the second was about the water features and about water conservation and our arid climate. And we, we very are very, very conscious. It's a pillar of our game plan is to conserve water. Um, we did hear that was the number one request from the community was to have some sort of interactive water. And because we're by the lake and you can't really get into the lake, it seemed to be an appropriate place to have a place where you can touch the water. Uh, the ditch is there, but you're not supposed to be in that water. That water, it's raw water, it's not potable. Um, so, you know, absent of providing better access into the lake and having water quality in the lake, um, a, a small water feature that uh, is not wasted water, the water would be reused in some way for irrigation or other uses, um, uh, seems uh, pretty uh, sustainable in, in our opinion. Uh, the third item that I wanted to address is budget. Uh, there were questions about, you know, how much would it cost to replace the playground that was there? How much did it cost to build the new playground? The new playground was significantly larger and more expensive than what was here before. The master plan did not propose replacing this with, a, with another playground, although it did suggest sort of play elements could be integrated. And that's, you know, why we are where we are. Um, so, you know, I, I hope that raises more questions and allows you to provide more input, but we did hear the desire um, uh, for adding some play features here. Um, we'd just like to know a little bit more about what that might entail. Thank you, Craig. Um, and 
with that, we you could either use the chat, or again, if you raise your hand, we will uh, unmute you, which will allow you to um, to let us know directly what what some of those play features are. Eliza. I think I'm unmuted again. Can you hear me? Yes. Yep, we can hear you. Okay, sorry, I'm in my car. Um, I, I put this in the chat as well, but um, you know, I think the, the new playground is great. It's a little harder for super little kids, um, you know, zero to maybe three-ish. So, you know, things that are, I mean, I actually think the mounds and um, like a little water feature are good for, for small kids. They're not going to get hit by other kids. There's nothing to really fall off of. Um, but, you know, adding something else in there that might have like a couple little slides or something to, you know, climb in and out of could be fun. Um, it doesn't have to be huge because huge, you know, is just actually not that good for the littles. Also, love, I love swings. And at the same time, again, for if you're trying to think about mass amounts of children, swings are not the best just because at least at the, even at the current playground with the basket swings, there's constantly like, oh, well, we have to wait for them to get, like not that many kids can use it at once. And there's really specific, you know, able body requirements um, for swings. So as much as I love swings, I'm not sure that they'd be the best, you know, addition to that part of the playground. I'm sure other people have uh, further ideas on, on this concept, but just as a, as a parent of kids who are, you know, 18 months, five and seven, that's kind of my uh, perspective at this time in my life. Definitely. Thank you so much for that feedback. Um, I, I like the, the tunnel and um, that slide and the different ideas that you provided. Thank you. Any other questions from the audience yeah. you'd like to raise? Um, yeah, Evan, are you able to unmute yourself? Yeah, can you guys hear me? We can, yes. All right. Um, yeah, no, I just thought I would chime in here a little bit, um, being part of the maintenance staff and everything that goes on around there. Just hearing the general public and kind of what they've been asking for, just being around the playground and parents and everything. It, it does seem that there is more of a need for like the last uh, person commented for slides and things like that, where the kids can actually climb up them on their own and then go down them on their own, where the parents aren't having to be so necessarily involved with watching them to make sure they're going to make it from one spot to the other. So I just wanted to throw my two cents in there. Like I was saying, it's, I've had people come talk to me about it. And that's kind of one of the one things is just a little bit more little kid involved. Thank you, Evan. I think Anne has her hand up. Are we able to unmute Anne? I have clicked to ask her to unmute. Well, while we're waiting for Anne to go in, I can totally relate with all the comments about the little kids. Uh, prior to COVID, I brought my, my little one to the diagonal park and poor little guy, <laughs> he didn't know what to do with himself. Um, and it looks like you are in. Um, please do share your comments. Oh, can you hear me now? Yes, Anne. Yes, we can. Um, I said in the chat, I lived in Washington, we lived in Washington from 
74 to 96 and saw both playgrounds being built and used them a lot for our, our children. I don't understand why they were replaced. You know, we still come to the park and use, you know, use it in a different way now that we're older, but why was the playground by the lake torn down? Why wasn't it just fixed up and rejuvenated? It cost $200,000 when it was built. It was back in the early to mid nineties when it was built, or early nineties. Why was it torn down in the first place? Just curious. I, I could, could could not quite hear the question because there was some static going on. Can you, can someone repeat her question? She, uh, I think her primary question is why was the original play uh, structure that was here removed, torn down and removed? Oh yes, the, the old playground that was in this location was removed because it was uh, they offer a public safety issue the structure was compromised and was no longer safe for public use and it had to come down. The well, one reason why the smaller the playground um, that was changed from the, let's see, the southern part of the park was built for little kids is because it was away from the water and much safer. Now if you just build a playground for you know smaller children, parents are going to have to really watch their kids so they don't go into the lake, you know, because they're right there by the water. You know, it just didn't, it, it seemed much more make sense that you had the smaller playground where the big playground was built just recently. And now, you know, you just don't have enough playground space for kids either. I agree with everybody who mentioned that too. You know, you need usable stuff that the kids can, can use and, um, also, if you could be, be more zero cut down. I'm just so glad to see at the South Pond, you know, natural light landscaping brought back. I've lived there where everything was taken out and ripped in and walled in, whatever, and the lake looked awful. And now it looks more like the pond should, you know. I'm not quite sure if that was a question, but I um, I did not hear all the comments. If anyone can fill it in the blanks. Yeah, and there, there was quite a bit of feedback. Um, um, asking her to unmute herself again, just if she wants to wrap up, unless um, Kristen, Jesse, or Carrie are able to um, to kind of answer where, where she was going about the zero scape. Yeah, and, and if it's easier, you can always put it in the chat or you can um, contact us directly on that email information that was provided at the end. Jesse or Carrie, can you scroll to the very end so people can reference the um, the contact information one more time? Thank you. So everyone, please feel free to contact me with any questions. If we did not get to your question today, we'll, we'll try to uh, provide a document with most common questions asked today and make that available in our project website as well. Uh, feel free to contact me directly with uh, your questions and even if they come later, come uh, maybe tomorrow. Uh, also pay attention to your RNOs communications about a, a second survey link that uh, is another way that you can provide feedback about the concept designs that you see, uh, that you saw today. Uh, feel free to also um, uh, really let us know uh, the things that you do love about the concepts and the things that uh, could be improved and the things that uh, you see that, uh, is, it, it, that you like to see more. Um, we are not really quite asking for you to rank the, the concepts, more a feedback of how you see yourself using the space. Uh, but feel free to tell us which concept as well, 
uh, that you like, uh, we, we always like to tally out also those, those preferences as well. I see some couple questions. So this slide is going to stay up so you can write down my contact information and I can provide you the information that you need um, moving forward. I, I don't know. I don't know who raised first. So Tonya or Joyce? I can jump in. This is Joyce. I was just curious about it, if you're in um, far enough along to know what kind of materials you'd be using. I asked about the synthetic turf, wondering what the pavers would be constructed of. I'm just concerned about um, the use of petroleum sorts of products or tire crumb, which are not sustainable. So just curious if you know anything about the products. Hi, Joyce. Um, as of right now, we don't have like the materials um, or details really figured out since we're um, really trying to figure out the program and concept of, of this area. Um, once we do dial in, um, you know, get closer to, to meeting the, the community feedback, um, aligning with the master plan and um, kind of meeting with, with the survey feedback as well, um, we'll then go into more design development, which will get into those details. So as of right now, we don't have that information, um, but I hear you. Um, I, I do agree as well, uh, making sure that it is all sustainable and environmentally um, acceptable. Yeah, so just a comment would be that the crumb rubber is really unsustainable and has a lot of toxics in it that can harm children. So to avoid that particularly, and then my other comment is just um, to make it more of a natural buffer between the playground and the lake um, for visual and for protection of water quality. Thank you. Got it, thank right. you. Thank you very much, Joyce. So um, out of respect for, for people's time, we're gonna let Tanya, who was the last person, raise her hand. Um, we, we are also saving the chat and the different questions. Again, um, please send any questions you have to, to Ana Claudia, Tanya. I will ask you to unmute yourself uh, and then you will be the last person tonight. Um, we originally had the meeting scheduled till 6.30. So we thank you for, for staying with us extra um, and working, working with us through some of the technical issues. Anya, you should be able to mute yourself. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm sorry. I hopped on late. It's I have a young one, <laughs> and it's during dinner, so um, I don't know what I miss. But um, me and a lot of other moms with young children. I know for your most recent survey. I sent it to everyone. I know. Um, and as long as the other people, um, as well as the other people in the chat, it does seem like the young children's space is a priority to a lot of us in this neighborhood. And I do appreciate all of people of all ages supporting that. Um, before I had kids, I never felt like there was a lack of space for me to enjoy the park. Um, I don't know what your most recent survey led to as far as the demand for a space for young children. Um, but I did hear like what you're asking um, for. And we do look for things like small slides or tiny bridges or just things for kids under five because the larger playground does get extremely busy and they're competing against people driving in from all over the city. Um, so it's just a really, really busy, busy place with a lot of older kids and it's just not a friendly, hospitable place for young children. So that's what moms of littles are just looking for, parents of littles. Um, in this community that we'd like to see. I, I usually have my son just walk around the park because there really isn't anything for those small kids. So it would mean a lot to us and I think the local community if that would be considered. Hi, Tanya. No, um, thank you for that comment. Um, yeah, I, 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 I think that is a, a great um, program element that we can um, you know, put, put in the next round of um, concept developments um, and gear it up to for the next phase um, moving forward kind of developing our, our final concepts so we, we will definitely take that comment um, and move it forward um, and as Anna Claudia did um, also state earlier is that we are going to be providing another survey um, coming 
from the feedback we received from this public meeting and also from the existing concepts that we already provided and showed everyone during this meeting. Um, that survey will be live um, hopefully in the next week, um, but we, we do have your guys' contact information. If you guys received this meeting invite, you will be receiving that link to the survey. Again, we, we thank you all for joining us this evening. Um, uh, you know, as the next steps uh, had laid out by Kristen, um, if there's any other questions, please send them to Anna Claudia. We thank you for being with us for this additional time um, and, and all the input that you, that you had for this, this portion of Wash Park.